Hi everyone, Kurt Zepp here. So a couple weeks ago I captured the North American Nebula, which is NGC 7000, with my portable Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope. Now I'm going to take that data and I'm going to process it. I used PixInsight and Photoshop to do my processing. Both of those are paid software. There are free software which are similar to both of those programs. One of, those, one of them is called Ciro, that's similar to PixInsight. And there's another one called GIMP, and that's equivalent to Photoshop. I will provide links to both of those programs in the description section. Also, the moon was out when I captured this data, so there was more gradients in there, so it was a little difficult to process, but I did my best. And one other thing, this is an emission nebula, and emission nebula are sometimes better captured using narrowband filters and in this case this would be uh, the, the North American Nebula would be a good one to capture with a, what's known as a dual band filter which captures hydrogen and oxygen. I didn't have any of those filters available so I just captured it the best I could with this dwarf. Anyways let's dive in and see what I did. Okay so let's open up PixInsight. I already got it open. And what you want to do first off before you do anything is you want to take a look at the images to see if there's anything funny in them. And so what you would do is you'd come up to process and you'd locate where it says blink. And I'm not seeing it. Here it is, blink. So you just click on blink. I've already got it open, so here we go. And what happens is I uploaded all those images and you just go, and it gives you a little screen here, and you would just observe it and, and take a look at that. Oh, you see that? That's a jet going by. So what you would do is you just click down here where it says get rid of that. So you don't want to actually stack that and just go through and see if you see any other thing in there. There was something over there. Minor things you don't have to worry about. It's just big things like jets. Or if you saw anything that's streaking stars or, star, or some frame that just, for whatever reason, didn't come out. Okay, so you get the idea. So once you've got all those, uh, you went through all the frames and kept the ones you want and got rid of the ones you didn't, you want to transfer those good frames to another folder. So you would highlight them like this. Let's say these were the good frames. And you would come down here and uh, select this button. And you can create a new folder somewhere. We'll just call it good frames. Good frames. And you would sl press select it and it shows up down here and you press select the folder. And that's it. Yeah, you've now saved those frames to a, a good folder. Then what you're gonna do is you can close this program out and you're going to upload those files into a stacking portion. So here we go into script, batch pre, batch processing, come down to weighted batch processing. Okay, now you can leave everything in default. You don't have to mess around with anything around here. Just leave it in the default position and click over here to lights and then what you'd want to do is you want to come down here to where it says add custom now so you could do add lights some people do that i i just have done it this way for a long time so i just go over here to add custom and you would go find your files where they're located now here's a couple i'm okay so you just keep adding all these files adding all, all the ones that you wanted to keep and then what you would do is you would put image type, and these are light frames, and you would call it something. I don't know, we'll just call it light frames or RGB. You can name it whatever you want. Press OK, and then they'd appear there. And if you took some flats, which I did not do, apparently you don't need flats with this Dwarf 2, but if you did take flats, you could add them here. I did take some darks, and so I would go find my darks, 
and I've actually already added them. I took 20 darks. I didn't do any bias. You don't really, you don't need to, if you do darks, you don't need bias. So I'm all set. And then what you would do is you would take one of these frames and that would be your master frame. So you would double click on it or it's going to appear down here where it says uh, reference image. So it's going to use this image as the reference image when it frames all the other ones. So we double click on it and notice how it changed down here. And then what you're going to do want to do is you're going to want to save it somewhere. So I would save it on to the where my folders, where my images are. So it's in Dwarf 2, and I would just create a new folder. I'll, let's call it Process 1 or something like that. I would sec press Select Folder, and I would press Diagnostics, and it'll tell you if anything's wrong. And this is okay. It's telling me there's no flats or no biases, and we already know that. So I would press OK, and then I would just press Run. I'm not going to do that because it's going to take, um, I have 750 files or frames, and it's going to take like an hour to do that. I've already done it. If you only had like even 50 or 100 frames, it would only take like 5 or 10 minutes to stack. But like I said, I had 750 frames, so it, it took a, yeah, it took like an hour. So anyways, I would just press run and it would go through its whole scenario and then it would be done and it would produce an image. When it was completed with its stacking regime, it made all these things. It said they calibrated frames, debayered, had logs, master and registered. The master is what we really want. So it made a master light, that's our image. And it also made a master dark if we wanted to save that for a later date. Let's open up this master light and see what it looks like. Now, if we look at it, you are going to notice that it looks pretty dark. There's nothing there. What happened? Didn't it work? Well, no, it worked fine. What happened is it's a called a linear image right now. And what you have to do is you have to brighten it up a bit. So we're going to come over here and open up screen transfer function. And that's a couple of different places. Everything's in the process if you look for it. So you go to screen transfer function. I usually turn this link thing off. That's if you had separate RGB images, but we have a color camera, so we did not have to worry about that. And we're going to click on this button here that looks like the radioactive symbol. It auto stretches it, and here it is. And that looks pretty good right now, I think. Okay, but we're going to see if we can do some other stuff with this image to um, make it even better. Okay, in this next part, I'm going to do what I do to convert this into a nonlinear image. Right now it's a linear, so. Watch what happens when I click this off, it goes away. It's still there, it's just, it needs to be stretched. And now it's back to, it's still non-linear, or it's still linear image, but. Okay, so what I wanna do now is, first off, I like to make a duplicate image, and I'm just gonna close this one out so I don't screw the main one up. All right, and you can rename it something, but in order to come over here, you just right mouse click it, change identifier, and you can call it like V1 or something like that. And then it changes the name. And then you might want to save it right now. You can come over here to open and save. And when you save it, at least when you first start off, you want to save it as an XISF. This is the native PixInsight file. Saving, I'll, I'll save it and show, show you what it is. And it's a 32-bit floating point, and that's fine. Leave it all as is, and then it's saved. All right, then what you want to do is you might want to crop some of the outer edges a bit just to get rid of, like, where you have artifacts, stacking artifacts. So what you would do is you'd come over here to Process, come down where it says Geometry, and do Dynamic Crop. And you can go to something like this, and you can just 
move it out, you know, really get where you want to. And you might crop it again even more later on, but this is just your initial crop. So you might want to do something like that and press this little check mark right here, the execute button. And there we go. Okay, so I've actually already done that too. So here's my image cropped. All right, next what you want to do is you want to smooth the image out. And you do that by doing what's called a background extraction. Now, it gives you two different types, the automatic and the dynamic. And if you're a beginner, I would just recommend go with the automatic for now. Once you get going with the, this, these programs, you can start playing, getting fancy and doing dynamic. But for our purposes, we'll just go with an automatic background extraction. So you open it up, you can leave all these default, you don't even have to mess with them. And you just want to click on where it says target correction, where it says none, you want to change that to subtraction. Make sure you get press this uh, discard, the background model. You don't really have to, it'll just give you another version of it with the background, but just don't even show it. You can press normalize if you want. And we just take this over here, this little triangle, and just put it over on it, and it's going to do its thing. And notice it gives us the unstretched version, so you got to come down here, click this, and you can see what it did. And I'll close that out, and we got our nice little smoothed out image. So it actually brought out the nebulas a little bit more. This over here is the North American nebula. And you can see right down here, this is uh, where it's the Mexico, this is the Gulf of Mexico. And this one over here is called the Pelican Nebula, although it doesn't really look too much like a pelican to me. I mean, this is its beak, I guess. Okay. All right, we'll close this one out because we don't need this one anymore. And this is our one that we're going with. Next, what you want to do is you want to use this program called Blur Exterminator. Now this program you'd have to add to PixInsight. It's a, a plugin to PixInsight and I can provide the link to it. It's a really good add-on that I would highly, highly, highly recommend getting. It's also in process over here, but as every everything's in in these processes, but it's also if you click down here, it just these are the processes categorized. Well, let's just go in here in all processes. It's called Blur Exterminator. And here it is. Just leave everything as a default and let it do its thing. Okay, looks like it's done. And let's see what it did. So here's before, or after and before. Here's how it was before. Notice what it did all the stars. It actually made the stars smaller so they're not overtaking the image. And it did a fabulous job identify the name and I change the ending to I keep keep everything the same but I would put BTX for blur exterminator press and then I would save it as well but I've already done that and next what you want to do is you actually want to make it nonlinear and there's numerous different ways to do it I will show you the quick and easy way come over here to script come over here to easy processing suite soft stretch and there's what it's going to look like just run it and there it is okay and again now i would change the name to something i would change it to easy soft stretch or something like that so i would just come over here to easy soft stretch press ok now i don't need this screen transfer anymore because it's non-linear so from now on it'll look show up like this now, one thing we can do, if you really look close, you can see a lot of the noise in here. We can try to reduce some of that noise. For this, we're just going to use this program called Noise Exterminator. Now, Noise Exterminator is another plugin, and it's made by the same guy that did that Blur Exterminator, and he did another program called uh, Noise Exterminator, Blur Exterminator, and Star Exterminator. You can buy all three programs for like uh, add-ons, and I would highly recommend it. They're on, it's a hundred bucks for all three pieces, but you, they are so incredibly useful. It's it 
I highly recommend it. Okay, let's do the noise exterminator. And it's also, that's in, and on the process, noise reduction, noise exterminator. And what I like to do is you can play around with these sliders. It's to, to your taste. I'm just going to do 40 and I'm going to leave the detail at 15 and just bring the little triangle box over. It's done. And it made it much less noisy. It's still there a little bit, but I didn't want to go too much. I don't like to make it too get rid of too much noise. A little bit of noise is good and keeps the detail there. And again, I would change the name. Here it is. Next, you want to run, you notice how it's kind of greenish tinted there? You can get rid of that. There is, that green comes from just sky, uh, sky glow, and it tends to be, have a green tint. So you come over here to process, noise reduction, SNCR, and usually if you make it like 0.7, that's a good one to choose. Let's bring it over. And there it is. And you can it made it much less green. So we're done with that. And here's what the image looks like. And now I think I'm ready to do some other stuff. But I'm going to change the name right now. I'm going to call it Working One. So I'm going to change his name. Like, I, like I've changed all these things. And I would call it Working One. And then I would save it. Okay. This next part. So we've got our working one image. And what I like to do now is save it as a TIFF file because we're going to actually bring it into Photoshop pretty soon. So the way to save it as a TIFF file, you just come over here to File, Save As, and down here where it says XISF, just click on it and you would save it as a TIFF file, press Save, and then it was, you can save it to wherever you want it at. All right, this is already a TIFF file, so I've already... Whoops, it's not a TIFF file. I'll open up the TIFF version. Here we go, working one. Right, now, it's, uh, now it's the TIFF file. So what you want to do next is you want to use this program called Star Exterminator. And yes, it's part of that same three plugin suite by uh, Russell Croman. And again, I'll provide links for that in the description section. So you come over here to All Processes and come over to where it says Star Exterminator and you would just leave it. You don't have to touch anything. You just click on this and it would do its thing. This would take a minute or so. I've already done it and what you would be left with is you'd be left with an image where it just has the stars and an image that has no stars. So I would close this one out. And I got these two images, and I would change their names. So I already changed the name to Starless, and I changed this name to Stars. And I'm not really going to need the Stars right now, so I'll just minimize that. I don't even need the original version right now. What I'm going to do with this uh, Starless image is I'm actually going to take this version right here, this Starless version. I'm going to try to make it bring out the nebulosity a little bit more. And so a good way to do that is to bring it into Photoshop now. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to close this out or minimize it. And I'm going to open up Photoshop. Open Photoshop. We come over here to TIFF. And that's the Starless version. Here it is right here. Okay. And one thing you can do is you can try to uh, make the nebulosity, bring that out a little bit more. That's what we're trying to do. So a good way to do that is you come over here and I made a, added a background layer. Come over here to select color range. And that isn't bad right there, actually. Let's see what, if I make it red. Yeah. Yellow, yeah, a little bit more. Highlights, see what that does. Yeah, that ain't bad either. All right, there we go. We'll just do that and come over here to select and mask. And we'll, may, we'll feather it. So we're sort of like smoothing it out. Okay. And then I would come over here and press this button here. 
select, uh, so I'm selected on the mask right now. And then you can do all sorts of weird things with the color to bring it out. That's where I'd start with color balance and maybe do something like that. Oh, that's a little too much there. <laughs> you see how uh, so all you want to do is small subtle changes, not go hog wild like I just did. And you can also come over here and bring out the press filter. And I've still got this thing highlighted right now. Actually, what I can do is I can double click that again. And I'm and now I'm over here. So I made another. I made a. I just made another. I copied that layer. So I'm only gonna. So I'm. I'm gonna add to it. Doing something else. I'm gonna come over here to it with just the color mask that I just did. So then what you want to do is you want to come over here and where it says layer, you want to flatten the image. Now what I would do right now is I would come over here and I would save it as a new image. Okay, so you've got your image that you did some color balance with and you saved it as Starless 2. So then you may want to do something a little bit more to make it a more natural color. You can come over here, open camera raw filter. And you, again, you've got all sorts of different color adjustments that you can do. Yeah, I think that looks, that's looking a little bit better, I think. I mean, a little bit bluer. It was sort of uh, over, over, over reddened a bit, I would say. And so I would just click OK. And before and after. Okay, so something like that. And again, you can keep playing around with camera raw filter. They've got other other adjustments in here. This camera raw filter is pretty good. You know, click it open. Uh, they've got contrast. You know, you know, I don't know if we're going to play around with that. We might want to play around with that later. Uh, after we get our final image, you can make it darker. That's making the edges or the the black parts darker, but not really affecting too much of the nebulosity, texture, clarity. All sorts of things. It's kind of fun just playing around with this program, right? You can just, all the stuff you can do with it. The vibrance. And you also have detail, so you can actually make it sharper or less sharp. And you can actually take away some more of this noise. And look at that. And we want to play, we might want to do some more noise in production later. But right now we just sort of want to play around with the color. Or at least I like to just play around with the color until I get it just the way I like it. Again, I would save this, or I would come over here to layer, merge it, and then I would save it as something else like, okay, now what we're going to do is, and I've already done it, I've already saved it, so there it is. So now we're going to go back into Pix Insight. So I like to bounce back and forth between Pix Insight and Photoshop. And then what we're going to do is we've got our new version, which was Starless 3. So there's Starless 3. And we still have our stars. Now what I like to do now is I'm going to reduce these stars a little bit more. And the way I'm going to do that, it's a pretty snazzy thing I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here to Intensity Transformation, Curves. Click on the object that we want to do a curves adjustment and then open up this circle and that gives you a real-time preview and watch this just make it and i'm making it bigger i don't want to do that i want to do the opposite i'm going to make them smaller something like that and then i would just come over here and apply it and voila my stars that are even more reduced so i just minimize that and then i want to combine these images so the way to do that is you would just come over here to this process, pixel math, open up pixel math, and it's pretty simple. What you would do is you would leave it RGB, you don't have to touch anything else, expressions editor, and by golly, here it is. So we've got uh, starless three plus working stars one, press okay, and then we just come over here and press the square and there we go, we got the new version. So this is my new version. And here is my original working 
version. So you can see the difference. So here is the working version, and then here is the latest one. You can see it with the stars reduced and the colors adjusted a little bit more. Okay. Okay, so now we've got our combined image, our new combined image. I'm going to bring it back into Photoshop. Now, basically, this working too, what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is open up a layer, and we'll come over here to select color range, and we can actually see what the reds do for us now. And it's not bad. I want to sort of adjust just the reds right here and the reds right here, make those a little bit more pronounced. So I press OK. Come over here, press Select and Mask. And we would do the feather. And we'll actually you know, make them a little bit more pronounced, highlight them a little bit more. That's good. And press this little mask button. Click over here, and now we can really do some adjustments to the colors right here. I'll come over here to Adjustments, and where it says Channel Mixer, and we can actually just start. You can see what's going on right there. If I start turning up the the red, how it just really made those pronounced outwards, and take the blue, and make the blue a little bit less, so that makes it a little bit more yellowy if you wanted. If you put more blue in there, it makes it more of that pinkish red. But I kind of liked it just like right about here, what we did. Go back to red. Maybe I'll come over here and press flatten the image. And at this point, I would save it. And I'm probably going to save it to a final image. So I might uh, call it, you know, final one or something like that. Okay, get rid of it, and I've already opened, I've already saved it as final one, so we'll open it up. All right, so I've got it saved as final one. Then what you can do is you can start doing some noise reduction. You can come over here, put another layer on here. One way you can do noise reduction is you can come over here and do uh, press these action sweet and look for it says deep sky noise reduction another place you can do noise reduction is you can come over here to filter noise and you can just put reduce noise i don't know i don't like this one <laughs> another place you can do noise reduction and if you're new to astro photography probably the simplest way to do it place to do it would be actually just come over here to the camera raw filter. You would come over to where it says detail and just press a little bit of noise, not too much. And then it'll apply that noise reduction. Now let's say, for example, you wanted to keep it, you know, you, you liked what it did to here for noise reduction and around here, but you don't really like what it did to this portion. You wanted to keep it more detailed. Is there a way to just protect those areas? And there is. All you'd have to do is come over here, or one way to do it is you just come over here to where it says eraser tool, and you can change the size of that circle. This is a good size for the circle, and just press that circle, and what that's doing is it's keeping that, the original, and we're going to do it over here. So it's not doing the noise reduction on those little areas, on those edges, but it is doing the noise reduction everywhere else. And you can just very carefully go highlight areas that you want to protect so it's not denoising it and leave the other areas to where it is denoising it. Okay, and then I press save it and um, call it something else. And here it is. I've Here's a new version of it after I did the denoise and added the color. I named it uh, Final 2. Okay, one last thing you can do is you can take this image and you can do something with the color just a little bit more. And I'm going to do that, and we're going to crop it too. And the way to do that is I'll come over to this camera raw filter again. 
and see if there's something we can do with it. I don't know. I'm not liking the color too much, but we, what we can do is make it a little bit more blue. Not too much, just little small little subtle, subtle changes in it. Okay. And maybe do something with this vibrance a bit. Yeah, it's making a little too much there. You don't really want to make it too unnatural looking. Maybe the color mixer a little bit. I guess what I'm not liking is the greens too much, but so there might not be anything we can do with it. The moon was out when I was taking this, and so it created a lot of excess gradients in it, and that's what's causing a lot of this mishap. That's why I'm just playing around with the colors to see if there's something I can do with it. I don't know. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, let's just press OK, and we'll call it quits. Let's see. Before, after, before, after. Yeah, I like it. After. There we go. I think it did something. And we'll press flatten image. I'm going to call this save as 3A. I'm also going to crop it. So the way to crop it is you just come over here where it says the crop button. And what am I going to crop? I'm going to crop this, that star out of there. <laughs> it says there's nothing over at that area anyway, so I'm going to just get rid of it. And we'll just press crop. And there's my image. Voila. So I'm going to call this save as version 4A. Save as a TIFF file. And then I'm done. By the way, when I want to share this image, usually I don't want to share TIFF files because they're much too spacey what you can do is you can come over here and save it as a jpeg and you press save as copy and i've already made a folder called jpegs so that's where i want to save it and i'm going to call it for it come down here press copy save as jpeg press save and it's gonna, i'm going to keep it the maximum quality which is 12 and it says maximum here and you just press ok and that's it. Okay, well, hopefully you guys have learned something. I hope I kept this relatively simple. And again, I, I'll provide links to the programs that I mentioned. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>